Hey there, Phillips here. This video is going to be on the physical cluster Marauder Demon Hunter build for patch 2.4. So the Marauder got some significant buffs as well as a few new items. So there's going to be an optimized build around that setup. So you can see on the screen the spec, the skills and ability, the gems, cube powers, passives, everything's right there. Along with some gameplay so you can kind of see how it goes and you can just take it from here you don't want to see the long-winded explanation you don't have to otherwise you can stay tuned and I'm gonna go over the whole setup so let's go ahead and switch over the game here and I can show you the new Marauder set and some of these numbers are still being tweaked and tuned, so don't pay so much attention to the exact numbers, just kind of keep in mind the overall idea of these abilities. So you get all of the companions, you get your sentries deal more damage, as well as you deal more damage with these abilities per sentry. So, big damage bonuses based on having sentries and using these abilities. That's the new Marauder. Basically the same as it was, just a little bit bigger. Some of the new items we have here is the Manticore. It's going to give you a cluster error damage modifier, as well as the resource reduction. It's going to be really huge for cluster error spam. One of the big issues with this build in the past was the resource. So you get the up to 50% reduced cost on the cluster error. It's going to be really key for being able to spam that as well as the rucksack has been changed here so it has up to a hundred percent damage bonus for your sentries that's going to be really good obviously a large portion of your damage is coming from the sentries so that's going to be nice another new item we have here is the zoe secret this is going to be for toughness you can see you get damage reduction per companion and with marauder you have you know all of the companions so you're getting a very significant damage reduction from this and then we also have the Wraps of Clarity here, more damage reduction, and then the Hellfire Amulet, standard stuff here, along with the six pieces of Marauder, and then the Focus and Restraint for the Rings, or the damage bonus. So that's kind of the general idea. Now we're going to talk about the skills and abilities and I'm going to tell you why I'm using these and some alternative options. So here we have Evasive Fire Hardened. This is going to give you an armor increase for a few seconds. And it's really nice when you get into the higher tiers to get that damage reduction. Boost up the armor a lot. Really good damage reduction. The alternative here is Focus. Get that extra hatred which I found that the hatred wasn't really an issue, survivability was more of an issue, so that's why I'm preferring the Hardened. But you could just as well run Focus in the lower tiers and do just as well. Shooting Stars here, Physical Rune. Another option is Maelstrom. You can use the Cold Rune, a little bit more AoE, a little bit less single target. Um, depending on the Greater Rift level, you know, you're probably going to prefer Shooting Stars just for the damage. And then here we have Vault Tumble for the mobility. Here you can use Smoke Screen. Displacement's good. Lingering Fog's alright. Uh, personally, I'm a fan of Tumble. Good utilization of that ability is going to do better than Smoke Screen most of the time. Here we have Vengeance with Seethe for the Hatred Generation. And then we have the Companion. I have this Unruned, mostly just to demonstrate that it doesn't matter what rune you select. You are going to get all of these bonuses regardless from the Marauder 2 piece. Here for the Sentry Rune, I'm using Polar Station for the slow. This is going to proc your Call of the Weak and your Bane of the Trapped. Give you those damage modifiers. And then here we have Custom Engineering for the passive, extra Sentry, extra duration, Awareness for the Cheat Death, Call of the Weak for the damage, and then Ambush for the damage as well. And then on my Hellfire, I have Ballistics. If you don't have a good Hellfire, you do want to have Ballistics. That is going to be the best passive for the setup. And the weakest one is going to be Ambush. So if you don't have a Hellfire, you would drop Ambush. 
or potentially awareness. If you're not having survivability issues, the value of awareness is kind of depending on the level of the greater rift that you're at. The higher you go, the more value you're going to get from that. So, that's the skills and abilities. Now I'm going to talk about the itemization and the stat priority. So I kind of already glanced over the items, and I'm just mostly going to talk about the stat priority here. So, like most Team Hunter builds lately, you are going to want to have enough cooldown reduction to get 100% vengeance uptime. You'll notice we have the Dawn and the Cube to reduce the cooldown, which is going to make it to where you only need 36 to 37 cooldown to get 100% uptime. So, however you have to itemize to get that cooldown to that appropriate amount, you're going to want to do that. So you'll notice I have cooldown on my weapon, my quiver, my shoulders, and then my helmet, and then from Paragon. And that's getting me over what I need to be at, so okay to go a little over but you do not want to be any less than that you have to have 100 percent vengeance uptime and that is for the hatred as well as the damage reduction so the visage of goons here is going to give you the dark heart rune which is going to reduce the damage taken by 50 percent so definitely going to want to have that 100 percent uptime on the vengeance and then other than that, basically just get your crit chance, crit damage. Um, on the shoulders I have resource reduction. And then sentry damage on the chest and the shoulders. Gonna be really good. And then on the helmet I don't have cluster arrow, I'm using vitality. You could go with the cluster arrow. Uh, the damage is gonna be really good on that. Personally I like the thousand vitality, it allows you to play more aggressive and pull more and live easier, so that's doing really well. Um, other than that, it's pretty standard stats, you know, crit chance, get your vitality where you can. On the bracers here, we got the physical damage. It is a physical based build, unless you're running Maelstrom. So you do want to have that physical damage modifiers. And on my necklace, I would like that dexterity to be physical damage. And then your crit chance, crit damage on your rings. You could potentially put cooldown reduction on your rings. And then that would open up some stats on some other items, potentially. Like the quiver and the weapon, for example. You could get some other stats there. Like potentially I could move the cooldown from the weapon to the ring. And then put vitality on the weapon to gain more toughness. And be a slight damage loss for a significant toughness increase. But currently I don't have an ancient dual crit cooldown ring, so I'm just kind of working with what I have here. Again, it doesn't really matter exactly where you get it, as long as you get, you know, the cooldown and then damage modifiers on top of that. And then on the armor, you know, standard stuff, you get your toughness stats. The pants here, I would like that armor to be all res. But obviously with the secondary being fire resistance, can't get all res on these, so... That's pretty much the only thing that I'm missing on the boots. You got the cluster arrow. That's going to be definitely good. And so that's pretty much it for the stat priority. Now we're going to talk about, I mentioned the legendary gems. You got the Bane of the Trap for the damage. Zay Stone of Vengeance for the damage as well. And then Tagak for the toughness and the damage. So, Pretty standard gem setup, and the Zay's damage bonus is based on the sentry's location. So, you know, when you're on the Rift Guardian, you're going to want to put your sentries away from the Guardian to get value out of that. And just kind of rely on your follower and the spider to do the slow. So you don't actually have to have the sentry right on top of them. Depending on how many monsters you're fighting, they'll get slowed from other things. Now we can talk about the Paragon points. So in the core, I'm getting 15% movement speed because the ferrets give you 10% movement speed right there. And to get to 25, you only need 15 here. If you have some on your gear, you can take off some as well and the rest into dexterity. Typical stuff. Here, you're gonna wanna go to the cooldown reduction first to get you to that 100% vengeance uptime. And then after that, with the quiver, you usually have high crit chance, so crit damage would be next, and then crit chance, and then attack speed last. 
on the defense, standard stuff here, bottom to top, skipping the life regen. And then on utility, resource reduction is going to be the most important, followed by area damage, and then life on hit, and then gold find. Virtually useless. That's all of that. Now I'm going to switch back over to some more gameplay, and I'm just going to kind of talk about what I'm doing and some tips and techniques on playing the build. So, one thing that you're going to want to do. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure you have your sentries out. Whenever you get to a new map, you want to make sure that you have sentries up immediately and you want to get to that 5 sentry cap to get your damage potential to be maximized. The other thing that you're doing is keeping the Tegek up. So you're constantly spending resources to make sure that you maintain that Tegek stacks. If you don't spend for more than a few seconds, you're going to lose that. You're going to lose a lot of damage and survivability. So you want to limit the amount of downtime on that Tegak just by spamming and constantly spending. Other than that, you have your Vengeance and your Companion cooldowns. You're basically just casting them on cooldown. As soon as it's ready, you can just cast it. So you can use a Numlock kind of thing to do that. And then the other thing is Sentry Placement. So you are going to want to get value out of your sentries throughout the whole rift. So you want to make sure that you put them in a position to where they can attack into the next room and potentially into the last room if you're in like a keeped up map. You want to make sure that you put your sentries kind of in the doorway in a choke spot to where they can hit multiple areas. Because every sentry that you place you're spending resources and you're using a cooldown, so you're reducing the amount of cluster arrows that you could potentially be spending. So the more value you get out of each sentry throughout the rift is going to enable you to cast more cluster arrows throughout the rift. The other thing is the evasive fire hardened. Obviously once every five seconds you have to cast that to get your focus up. But if you are against some highly aggressive monsters, you're going to want to cast it once every 3 seconds because the armor bonus only lasts for 3 seconds. So if you need the toughness, make sure that you just you know, cast that generator every so often. And there's a little animation, kind of, it almost looks like a shield pylon when you have that buff so you, you know that you have that extra toughness. And then finally, the last thing that you're going to be keeping track of is the Convention of Elements rotation. So it's rotating through four different elements, and your primary damage is physical. So you do want to make sure you know it goes from lightning and then physical. And the idea is, you know, you want to be spending hatred on cluster arrow the whole time that you're on physical. So right before you get to physical, when you're on lightning, you want to make sure that you cast your generator. To get your focus proc and then during the physical rotation you're able to just constantly spam cluster arrows for four seconds straight and then you know resuming the standard rotation between the generator and the spender another thing kind of in the same line of reasoning of the physical convention of elements you also want to try to make it to where you're moving through the rift when you're not on physical. So, you know, when you're not on physical, you're extending forward and you're aggroing more monsters. That way, when you do get to physical, you have a lot of monsters to attack and you can kind of burst them down at that point. So, that's basically the gist of it, you know, the setup. Everything's there, the gameplay. And it's basically the same as it was a few patches ago. This is an old build, kind of revised and rebuffed. So it's much better than it's ever been in the past. And it's a lot of fun, kind of a throwback build. I quite enjoy Marauder, just in general. And here's a good example of sentry placement and positioning. You'll see I'm in a keeped up map, so... 
it is important to put the sentries, you know, into the next room. That way, they have line of sight on the, the previous room and the next room. So you'll see here, I'm putting the sentries kind of in the door, so they can attack behind me and in front of me, so that I get more value from each individual sentry. And that's one of the most important things about the build, and you know, being successful with the build kind of the only thing that you really have to worry about is the sentry placement and once you're kind of in the habit of placing the sentries in the right place you're going to get a lot of value from each sentry because the range on the sentries is really long so you do want to make sure that you're getting value from the sentries that you're leaving behind So that's pretty much it. I'm going to just let this play out so you guys can watch the end of the rift. And... That's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the build. I had a lot of fun playing it. And I hope you guys do too. And you'll see here on the rift guardian... I'm going to kite him down into this long area, that way I can get value out of my Zays. So he was in this little room, she was in this little room, I wanted to pull her out here, that way I could get value from my Zays, put the sentries really far away, and let them shoot them. And whenever it is a single target, I kind of mentioned this before, you don't actually have to have your sentries right on top of the monster, because your spider companion, as well as the follower, will trigger the slow for you so then you can see the health i mean look at the top the rift guardians just melt with the setup the single target damage is really good this is only greater rift 75 but you know the build definitely has room to push higher and the very strong setup so there you go hope you guys enjoy that thank you for watching and i will see you next time